they can say is no. and eat and celebrate the Passover. I hope we aren't going to ruin anything by barging in like this. I don't know what got into us. We were just so curious. Don't worry about it. It's part of the Jewish tradition to invite guests to Passover. Passover? Is that what this is? Passover? I realize I'm running the risk of sounding ignorant, but what exactly is Passover? Passover is a Jewish feast. A feelings? celebration we have every spring. Yeah, it's a tradition we've had forever. And everything we do at Passover means something special. Like what? Well, the songs, the games, the food, everything at Passover is symbolic. Symbolic? Symbolic of what? Symbolic of things that happened a long time ago when our people were slaves in Egypt. Questions, questions, so many questions. A wise one you must be, for questions are part of our tradition. That is why we ask four questions every Passover, and if you listen carefully, you'll discover the answers you seek. Why is this night different from all other nights? Are you ready? Yeah. Let's begin. Why in this night do we eat only unleavened bread? I know. Because that's what they ate at the first Passover. Right, Papa? That's right. Leaven is like yeast or baking powder. It makes bread rise. And since the children of Israel had to escape from Egypt in a big hurry, they couldn't wait around for yeast bread to rise. So they made flat on leaven bread, didn't they, Papa? Yes, they did. And since leaven is symbolic of sin, God commanded that they eat no leaven at all and that leaven be removed from their houses as well. Passover is a time that is symbolic of our separation from sin. 
Why in this night do we eat only bitter herbs? And why do we dip our food twice? We eat bitter herbs such as parsley to remind us of the bitter slavery of our Hebrew ancestors. We dip the parsley into salt water, which reminds us of the tears the Hebrew slaves shed in Egypt. And then we dip again into a thick paste that reminds us of the mortar the Hebrew slaves used when Pharaoh made them build the great pyramids of Egypt. Ooh. Why in this night do we all recline? Throughout history, rich men reclined while their slaves stood and served them. Tonight, we recline as free men, although we remember back to the time long, long ago when our people were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt. Sorry, for the tenth plague would be the most devastating of them all. 
For the angel of the Lord would bring death to the firstborn of every house that was not marked with the blood of a lamb. As always, God provided protection for his people. But first, God required an act of faith, which was in this case very interesting. God told the children of Israel to prepare a special feast. First, they were to kill an unblemished male lamb. Then they were to put the blood of the sacrificial lamb on their doorpost. This blood would be the sign for the angel of death to pass over, saving the Hebrew firstborn. With the hope that the tenth plague would convince Pharaoh to let them go, the Hebrew slaves began to celebrate as they prepared that first Passover meal. <laughs> The children of Israel obeyed God and put blood on the doorpost. So they were ready when the angel of death came. And where there was blood, there was no death. midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt. There was not an Egyptian house without someone dead, and there was weeping and wailing throughout the land. When Pharaoh discovered what had happened, he called for Moses. Take your Hebrew people and get them out of our land, Pharaoh said. Can you imagine how the children of Israel felt? Nothing could spouse their excitement, not even the miles of desert between them and the promised land.
chosen people could have died as slaves in Egypt, but God planned their escape, their exodus. Yes, helping them escape would have been enough, but then God did even more. He parted the sea so they could walk across on dry land. been enough. You know, God kept on doing more and more for our people, but it would have been enough if God had done any one of those great yeah. things. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. tonight is a celebration of our freedom. Once a year, Jews everywhere celebrate Passover by having a meal much like the one the Hebrews ate on the eve of their exodus. Hey, look at that. Oh, oh, shh, be polite. Excuse me, but I have a question. What kind of bone is that on the table? Questions, questions. I never heard so many questions. It's the shoulder bone of a lamb. It represents the body of the Passover lamb. The drink here reminds us of the blood of the land. the body and the blood reminds me of the Lord's Supper that we celebrate as Christians. Well, it should. I don't know a lot about Jewish things, but I do know that the very first Lord's Supper was a Passover meal. It was? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. After all, Jesus and his disciples were Jews, and the scripture says that Jesus' disciples prepared the Passover in the upper room. Wait a minute. If Jesus celebrated Passover, then why don't you Christians? Well, in a way we do, but it means something a little different to us than it does to you. Yeah. We call it the Lord's Supper when we celebrate and we think about Jesus. But why would anybody think about Jesus at Passover? Well, for a lot of reasons. For one, because the Bible calls Jesus our Passover lamb. Really? 
I've never heard that before. Well, it's true. When Jesus celebrated the Passover with his disciples, he said the unleavened bread represented his body and the drink represented his blood. Well, why did Jesus change the meaning of the Passover feast? Jesus didn't change it. He revealed the meaning of it. You see, the Passover had pointed to Jesus since the very first Passover the Hebrews celebrated. What? Hang on, this law makes sense in a minute. Just think back to the law that God gave Moses. God required the blood of a lamb as a sacrifice, right? Right. right. And the lamb had to be a perfect, unblemished, firstborn male, right? Right. Right. right? right. That is right. Isn't it, Papa? Yes, that's right. So God himself provided a sacrifice that would last forever. A perfect, unblemished, firstborn male whose name was Jesus. Isaiah the prophet wrote about a person who would be led as a sheep to the slaughter, one who would take away the sins of the world, and Jesus has. Let me tell. I know all about it. During the week of Passover, Jesus was nailed to a cross to die for our sins. And then, on the day we Christians celebrated Easter, he rose from the dead so that all who believe in him could have everlasting life. Like it says in John 3.16, remember? For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's just like at the first Passover. Those who believed God marked their doors with the blood of a lamb and were passed over by the angel of death. In the same way, those who believe in the blood sacrifice of Jesus the Messiah are passed over from death into life. Everlasting life. Right. God the Father gives the gift of everlasting life to anyone who accepts the sacrifice of his son Jesus.
anybody refuse a gift like that? Same way the Egyptians refused to believe God. They made the wrong choice. <sighs> hey, hear me out. The Egyptians wouldn't listen to God, so they weren't protected by the blood of the Lamb. I know it isn't fun to think about, but an awful lot of people today are making the same wrong choice, and it's really sad. The scriptures say that the wages of sin is death, as the Egyptians found out. And the gift of God is eternal life. But only to those who are covered by the blood. The blood of Jesus. Become one through Jesus the Messiah. 